How's it going guys? It's Kyle or the How To Guy123 here and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Cloner Alliance Flint 4KP Plus USB Capture Card. The Flint 4KP will allow you to capture any HDMI input, whether that is a game console, PC, or DSLR camera, to your computer via USB, and record or stream it via software like OBS. The Flint 4KP is plug and play and doesn't require you to install any drivers. This capture card will pass through your HDMI input to a display with a resolution up to 4K and can capture in a max resolution of 1080p at 60 frames per second. Cloner Alliance has sent me this capture card to review for free, but I'll be giving my honest feedback on it. Let's begin by seeing what we get in the box. First off, we get the Cloner Alliance Flint 4KP Plus itself. We also get a user manual slash quick start guide, as well as some tech support information. Moving on, we get one standard HDMI cable, along with a USB Type-C to USB Type-A cable to connect the Flint 4KP to our computer. Along with that, we get a plethora of different USB adapters to help connect the capture card to any device. For example, you can use the USB 3.0 Type-A to Type-C adapter to connect the Flint 4KP to a MacBook Pro, or the USB Type-A to Micro USB adapter to connect it to an older Android phone. Setting up the Flint 4KP is simple. On one side of the capture card, you'll find two HDMI ports. The HDMI in port is where you'll connect the device you want to record, whether it's a game console, DSLR camera, or a PC. For this video, I'm going to set up the Flint 4KP to record my Xbox One. So I'll connect an HDMI cable to the HDMI in port on the Flint 4KP. I'll then plug the other end of the cable into the Xbox's HDMI output port. The other port labeled HDMI out is used to connect to a TV or monitor for pass through or displaying your device's output on a screen. In this case, I'll connect the HDMI cable from the HDMI out port on the capture card, then connect the other end to my monitor. The Flint 4KP supports pass through to any display with a resolution up to 4K. Next, connect the Type C cable from the Flint 4KP to your computer which will be used for recording. You'll see a blue LED inside of the capture card to let you know that it's being powered. The 4KP also features a microphone jack for recording voiceovers directly through the capture card as well as a line out port which can be used to connect headphones and will allow you to hear the audio coming from your game console. We also have a line in jack which can be used for connecting a mixer or audio interface to the capture card. Now we can turn on the Xbox One, and there should be an output on the screen. However, in this case, my monitor is flickering and not displaying the Xbox properly. This is because the Xbox One automatically set the display resolution to 1440p when I connected it to the Flint 4KP, while my monitor is only 1080p. To fix this, I opened OBS on my computer, which was already set up with the Flint 4KP from previous testing. And in the OBS preview, I could see that the Xbox's output was being captured correctly. Later in the video, I will show you how to properly set up the Flint 4KP with OBS. But in the preview, I was able to navigate to the Xbox's settings, and under the general tab, I selected TV and display options, and I was then able to properly set the display resolution to 1080p. And once I changed the resolution to 1080p, the Xbox was displaying fine on my monitor. I'm not sure if you'll encounter this issue with other devices, but I've tested multiple devices with the Flint 4KP and I didn't run into any other problems. Other than that, that's all there is to it to setting up the Flint 4KP to record the Xbox One. And the setup process should be the same for other devices like a PS5 or even a desktop PC. Next, I'll show you the basics of setting up the Flint 4KP in OBS and recording 1080p 60 frames per second from it. So in OBS here, I have one scene called Xbox One, as that's what's connected to the Flint 4KP. Under Sources, I'm going to click the plus button, and choose Video Capture Device. I'm going to call the new source Flint 4KP, 
then I'm going to click on OK. This window is going to come up and under device choose live streaming video device. This is our Flint 4KP and the nice thing about the Flint 4KP is that it's plug and play and we don't need to install any drivers to get it to work. So as long as you have the capture card connected to your computer, live streaming video device should always show up in your recording software and it should always be ready to record. So I'm going to select it and click on OK and you can instantly see in the preview here that it's capturing my Xbox One. And once we've set up the video source here, it's automatically going to set our capture card's audio in the audio mixer here. So if we were to start recording, it will record the audio coming from the Xbox One along with the microphone and line in inputs if you have those connected. If you wanted to record 1080p 60 frames per second, click the settings button, go down to video, and make sure that base canvas resolution and output scale resolution are both set to 1920 by 1080 and make sure that the frame rate is set to 60 fps under output set the output mode to advanced then go to recording and the basic settings that i do is i set the recording format to mpeg4 mp4 under video encoder i set this to nvidia nvenc hvec I then scroll down and leave the rate control to CBR, constant bitrate, and I set the bitrate to about 50,000. If I remember correctly, the Flint 4KP can record up to 140 megabits per second. Those are all the basic settings that I would change here. So I'm just gonna click on apply and okay. And we're now ready to record with the Flint 4KP. The following is some Dirt Rally 2.0 gameplay on the Xbox One, recorded with the Cloner Alliance Flint 4KP+. 6 right, 80. Of a long crest into 6 left, Titans Pass Junction, 30. 4 right, narrow over crest. Don't cut five left, opens long into six left, 30. Four right long, tightens of a crest, 50. Don't cut four left, into six right, into six left long, 30. Six right of a crest, opens extra, extra. One of the main features of the Flint 4KP is that it can pass through your device to any display with a resolution up to 4K. So here I tested my Xbox One being passed through to a 4K TV through the capture card. The card was able to do this without any issues. The Flint 4KP can record a maximum of 1080p at 60 frames per second. So your output will be downscaled when you are recording a device being passed through at 4K. During my testing, I also tried using the capture card to record my gaming PC, which was connected to a 1440p monitor with a refresh rate of 144Hz. The Flint 4KP was able to pass through my PC's output to a monitor at 1440p, but unfortunately it only supports a maximum refresh rate of 60Hz. This makes the Flint 4KP less than ideal if you're planning to capture your gaming PC to a secondary or streaming PC as you won't be able to fully utilize the higher refresh rate capabilities of your display. While you might be able to get by playing some games at 60Hz, it's not the best experience if you're looking to stream esports titles like CSGO. I personally found CSGO to almost be unplayable at 60Hz after being accustomed to playing it at 144Hz for so long. The Flint 4KP can also be used to connect a DSLR or mirrorless camera to your PC as a webcam. Simply connect the camera via a micro HDMI to HDMI cable to the HDMI import on the capture card. To get a clean video feed from the camera, on my camera which is a Canon EOS Rebel SL2, I press the info button twice to remove any video capture information and then I turn autofocus off to remove the autofocus boxes. The capture card works great on video calling apps like Discord and Zoom. As with most USB capture cards, there is a delay in the video. However, it's very minimal and almost non-existent. 
And if you are using the Fluent 4K P with your camera during a video call or recording in OBS, your video and microphone audio should pretty much be synced up. And as an example, most of the face cam recorded in this video is with my DSLR camera connected to the Flint 4K P and recorded in OBS. Additionally, Cloner Alliance provides software with the Flint 4K P. The Cloner Alliance helper software allows you to stream and record from the Flint 4K P. I personally prefer OBS, but this software is easy to use and great if you don't want to spend time learning OBS or want to make a quick recording or stream with little setup. I like how this software gives a lot of recording options and even allows you to change the video encoder to encode the video off of a graphics card for better performance. Since the Flint 4K P is a UVC capture card, you should be able to capture footage from the capture card to an Android device. Cloner Alliance provides an Android app to capture from the Flint 4K P, however it's not on the Play Store and you'll need to download and sideload the APK in order to install it. From what I hear, getting this to work seems to be hit or miss depending on your Android device itself, but I was able to get it to work on my Google Pixel 7 Pro. When trying to record with the Cloner Alliance app, I was able to record video, but not able to record sound coming from the capture card. As an alternative, I tried using an app called USB Camera from the Play Store, and it worked better overall. I was able to record sound, and the app just seemed a lot more stable. It does seem, however, that the capture card is limited to 10 megabits per second when capturing from an Android device, and the low bitrate really shows in the video. To conclude, the Cloner Alliance Flint 4K P Plus does exactly as advertised. It can pass through an HDMI input to a 4K TV or monitor, and capture at 1080p 60fps. It's easy to set up, and is plug and play. While the Flint 4K P is a good capture card, where it does fall short is the price. Here in Canada, you can purchase the Flint 4K P for $230 on Amazon. The capture card market is very competitive, and you can purchase the Avermedia GC513 or the EVGA XR1 Lite for $139 and $158 respectively. These capture cards have the exact same specifications as the Flint 4K P, and these brands are a little bit more established and reputable than the Cloner Alliance. Alternatively, you could also purchase the Elgato HD60X. Elgato is the leading brand in the capture card space, and right now you could purchase the HD60X on sale on Amazon for $210. I believe the full price for the HD60X is roughly about $250, so it's only a little bit more than the Flint 4K P. Where the HD60X shines over the Flint 4K P is that it can record up to 4K 30 frames per second, and it can also pass through higher refresh rates. The HD60X can pass through 1440p at 120Hz and 1080p at 240Hz. It's not that the Flint 4K P is a bad device, it just doesn't really provide good value. I think if Cloner Alliance wants to compete in the capture card space, they're going to need to lower the price of this card. However, if you are interested in purchasing the Cloner Alliance Flint 4K P Plus, I'll leave a link to where you can purchase it in the description below. This link is an affiliate link, so I will get a cut of the profits if you do purchase using that link. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the review. If it helped, please leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions about the Flint 4K P, I can answer them down in the comment section below. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.